Just getting on a better routine uh, and kind of embracing that role. Um, and I think just more experience. I think the more experience you get in anything, the more comfortable you get and the better prepared you are. You know, uh, you've, in my mind, become one of the best closers in all of baseball. It's that sinker, 95 mile an hour, and you've gotten into a routine with it. You know, uh, did you ever expect you were going to be able to come back as good? Because now you're pitching better than you were as a starter. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, I think the velocity for me is something that's kind of surprising. Uh, you know, you've heard of guys going to the bullpen and throwing a little harder, um, but I didn't think I was going to sustain that the level of the velocity and then and maintain the movement. Uh, normally, when you throw harder, you lose movement, and it hasn't been the case. So um, that I think has been the biggest key, as long as, along with the command of it. The command has been really good, and I think that, if anything, has been the most important thing. You know, a couple bumps in the road while you were in this role. Uh, a chopper down the third base line in Milwaukee kind of led to you, you know, losing a chance to save another ball game. Another chopper in Oakland led to another chance of you right. losing a game. But as of late, I've noticed, because I know sometimes you come in and throw all fastballs, <laughs> I've noticed you've come up with your breaking ball and what an effect it's had on your outings. Right, that's something that we've been working on in the bullpen, uh, you know, when I play catch on the side. Uh, being able to mix that in uh, when I need it, uh, you know, lately I've been uh, just commanding the fastball really well. Uh, and even in Oakland, except for the pitch to Donaldson, which was uh, was down, but it was down where he wants it, not necessarily away. Um, so he beat me with that one. But I've been trying to figure out when to work that breaking ball in, and it just happened that I had some good situations to do it. Uh, a couple of hitters that I knew that were um, vulnerable to breaking balls, so I just tried to pick the right situation to use it. And it's really benefited me, and that's going to be another weapon. Uh, you know how good the hitters are out yeah. there, and it doesn't matter how much movement or how hard to throw. Eventually, uh, you know they'll make the adjustments. So to be able to keep guys honest with the, with another pitch is going to be big. Well, I have to admit that I kind of sit back in the <laughs> studio and I kind of second guess at time and say to myself, I wish I would have seen Britain's curveball, because I know you know when you get two strikes on that left-hand hitter and you throw a curveball, all of them are guessing fastball. Right. And when you threw that one curveball three feet outside in Anaheim. <laughs> To right. save that game, right. and the hitter just swung at it, and he—I think he was happy to walk away. That right. had to be a good feeling for you. Yeah, me and uh, me and Nick were kind of laughing after the <laughs> game, and I was to me, I was like, oh, "Man, that didn't even seem close to the plate." Uh, and we went back and watched the video, and I mean, it wasn't a strike, but it, it had the same angle as my fastball. And, the, and as you know, when you're, you're a catcher, uh, anything that has comes out of that same slot and maybe moves another way, the hitter just—he's dead red and able to throw some a little slower. That's moving the opposite way. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a nice realization that the guys are definitely sitting fastball, and any time I can throw something near the plate off speed, that a good result's going to end up.